What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. We got a special episode for you guys today. Our team traveled down to Indiana to get to know a couple named Brian and Sarah. The two have been married for 22 years and they have stuck by each other's side through it all. Their relationship was put to the test when Brian found out about Sarah's online friend named John. Sarah claims her intentions were only to be friends. The two messaged each other and started an online relationship. She has sent hundreds of thousands of dollars in hopes to meet this man in person. She reached out to us to verify his true identity. Let's jump into it, guys. My name is Sarah. I'm married. I've been for 22 years. My husband is very supportive with all my weird, crazy wackiness. He's very open-minded when it comes to that. I'm truly very, very lucky that I found the person I did. Oh gosh, this is gonna be, this is so embarrassing because I am obsessed with penis. I have a penis that looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, one that looks like a dragon, crocheted ones. Um, any costume that I had, I would pin penises on it. It's just like I was a Christmas tree one time and the ornaments were a penis. I'm just quirky and weird and everything when it comes to that. And I don't always stop and think of the consequences to my actions. Brian supported all of Sarah's hobbies and interests. He even agreed it was okay for Sarah to have friendships with strangers over the internet. I talk to people online. Um, it's not a new thing. I don't think it is wrong for somebody to have relationships of both sexes. Do we let other people in our sex life? No. Would he be open to it if I did, if I wanted that? Probably, just because that's how he is. Um, would he do it? I don't think so. Brian trusted Sarah. He didn't suspect anything when he caught his wife chatting with John through Instagram direct messages. The first message was on Instagram, your normal conversation where it comes to when you're trying to meet some, or when you're meeting somebody, like your hobbies and all that kind of stuff. Then it just kind of snowballed with, are you married? And I was like, yes, I'm married. And I asked him if he was married, he was not. He asked me, you know, the standard questions of whether I had children or not, which I do not. I was looking for, I guess, friendship, nothing else. But as time went on, I felt that that was not the case, even though um, I'm married. It's still nice to hear that, um, that people find me attractive. So it was nice. John and Sarah would talk all through the morning and night. The relationship started to become more intimate by the day. I thought he was very nice. Obviously, he was um, easy on the eyes. Blue eyes brown hair, no beard, but sometimes he does have a beard. He looks like he probably works out um, quite a bit. Um, nice, like six pack. Um, he does have some tattoos, um, on ones on his chest. Um, and then his arm is tatted up as well. But to me, he's just a very attractive man. And it was nice to have somebody that looked like that think that I was pretty. He would say that he loved me, that he wanted to take care of me. He had feelings for me. Maybe my actions came across as I'm still talking to him usually once a week. 
he would use the terms of endearment, babe, honey, love, all the time. Never my name. Before Sarah's online adventure, life was simple. Bills were paid on time. The two didn't have kids, but they loved their cat like one. She enjoyed talking to John, but he just seemed to always have a problem that involved money. Shortly after I met him, he um, got deployed to Syria. Supposedly, um, his um, accounts were frozen. He got injured. He got shot on a mission. He needed the money um, that I sent him to come back from Syria. He had to have the money to be able to get the flight because he needed to leave before the mission was up because he wasn't feeling well. Yeah, I don't want anybody to die because they can't get basic needs. John's request for money didn't stop. Their request seemed like they would never come to an end. All Sarah wanted to do was meet this man in person, so she sent even more money. He guilted her by sending these photos of his wounds from the battlefield. After the first time he asked for money is probably when it started going downhill. I probably sent him money every week to two weeks for probably a good solid um, six to eight months. I cashed in my a couple life insurances and I cashed in um, my retirement fund um, and I sent him 100% of the money. I had a Discover card for um, 15000 and I sent him that as well. And that's maxed out beyond maxed um, because he would, uh, this is terrible, terrible. Oh, I hate talking about this because this makes me feel stupid. He would pay that and then um, have me withdraw more money once the balance got down where I could um, withdraw some more money. And then that payment would bounce. John had all of Sarah's personal information, emails, passwords, debit and credit card pin numbers too. When we looked over her discovery credit card transactions, we could see when John was making the payments. He would take cash advances and then pay the card off. This built trust with Sarah and also made her believe that he was real. The problem was all of the payments that he made ended up getting returned. Over time, Sarah was left with a $15,000 credit debt. And had checks um, sent, had like blank checks. So um, I cashed those checks through my personal bank. Like I wrote myself a check, sent him the $9,000 and um, that money bounced and um, I had to pay that money back. He has my social security, he has my driver's license, he has my full name, he knows who my parents' names are, he knows my sister's name. He could destroy me for sure. I haven't sent him any money now. It's been two weeks, two weeks now um, that I had the last time I sent him money, and that was simply because he was starving. The amount started to pile up, and Sarah lost track of how much money she was sending. He needed money for food, water, medicine, hospital fees, plane tickets. His stories never ended. This guy was either a scammer or the unluckiest man on the planet. They never video chatted and Sarah is still claiming she was never in love with John. After sending thousands of dollars just in plane tickets, John finally made it on a plane and left Syria. But he was detained in Pennsylvania as soon as he exited the plane. Once um, things progressed and um, John wanted money, I did not originally tell my husband. I kept it um, a secret. He knew how to play on my weaknesses. There's that little bit of hope that he's not lying and he's not a piece of shit. 
and that if I can keep him alive, <laughs> that maybe he'll find a way to get out of his situation that he's in now. I want to know why the heck our military is treating people like this. He's not being provided like your basic needs. No, now he's in the United States and I, I said, you're close enough, like you're eight hours away from me. Why don't I take a road trip? I can take a road trip. I can take some time. I have time off. We can meet somewhere. I want, I want him to follow through with what he has promised me, which is one, coming to meet me um, because I would, I, in the beginning, I did want to meet him. I thought it would be nice. I thought it would be cool. Um, and my husband was okay with it at that time. I have nothing to hide. I'm owning my mistake. I'm owning what I did. And I hope that people respect me for that because I'm, I have nothing to hide. I don't feel like I did, I necessarily did anything wrong. I think most of the blame lays on this particular person because he was deceitful. Did I love him? No, not not in that sense. And at this point, um, do I still care for him? I care for the person who I originally met. And it's sad to me. Sarah cleared out her 401k maxed out all of her credit cards and sent her life savings to this man. This has forced her to pick up multiple part-time jobs to be able to survive. We are struggling way more than um, we necessarily would have to. And then I think it got to the point where this has definitely sent me into a depression financially. Um, it's, it's ruined us. The couple are doing everything they can to get back on their feet. Sarah opened up an account on Feet Finder and has resorted to selling images of her feet to people online to make ends meet. I would try to hustle like by selling feet pictures and that kind of weird stuff as well. It's not like I'm rolling in dough or anything like that. I'm trying to make a living and you can sell feet pictures but um, and stuff like that. I only sold a couple of those, um, and then um, a couple people um, bought me pedicures. I confessed everything to my husband and told him how much money um, I have sent John um, and everything. And, you know, he basically said it, it's money and we'll deal with it as it comes along. I just kind of want to know if this person is actually who he says he is. I want closure. It's always on my mind. Sarah provided us with a ton of information. She kept all of the receipts for all the gift cards she purchased for John, the checks she wrote, and every cash advance she took on her credit cards. By using the tools on our website, socialcatfish.com, our search specialist team was able to find the true identity of the man in the photos that John was claiming to be. Sarah and her husband were waiting patiently to find out if John was lying about who he truly was. After a few days of digging into everything, we felt that we had all the information to give clarity to Sarah and John. We sat down with Sarah first to get more insight on her relationship with John. Just so you know, like Brianna are married. We own this business together. You know, we've been out and like, you know, there's guys that will give her attention or even I know you guys in the YouTube comments always leaving comments for her, but I laugh at it. For me, it's like not that big of a deal within boundaries, right? Or still showing somewhat respect. But like when you open yourself up to like having somebody tell you you're beautiful all the time in these long conversations, do you think that like, you know, feelings start to evolve over the, that time because, you know, that those words are being traded, you know, all the time. Did I care about him? Yes. Um, was I hoping to meet him in person? Yes. Did I have feelings for him that I probably shouldn't have? Yes. Um, do I still have them? N no, I don't think so. Because of everything that he's done, um, but it is very... It's very difficult to 
admit to yourself that you got played by somebody and that somebody is that cruel to do that to another human being. And I, I probably liked him. I liked the attention that he want, he gave me. And I figured if I continued to do the things that he asked me to do and continued to talk to him, that he would continue to give me that praise. And he, so it kind of became kind of like an addiction, I guess, is how you view it. We wanted to give Sarah the time to talk about her relationship with John. From how she described it, it seemed that there was intimacy involved, but her husband was okay with it. Brian then sat down with us to give his perspective on the situation, and this is what he had to say. Hey, Brian. Hi, Brian. Obviously, we spoke to Sarah. You know, this has been going on for a few years. Walk us through, like, you know, what's been going on. I just see it as it's just another day. <laughs> it's, it's just more of the usual. So up until this point, you you still don't know the full story or the details. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about John. I didn't even know his name until the other day. The only thing she really told me is that she was scammed out of about $60,000 and it was all investments that she lost. There may have been losses more than 60000 Okay. I'm just being honest with you. Right. Yeah, yeah that's fine. The, the only thing I wanted to do when she told me was um, I just wanted to support her any way I could because I knew she was in a really bad place. When she continued to talk to him, like, how did that make you feel? Honestly, I didn't know about that until today. Your guys' relationship, your, your guys' relationship, but, you know, our goal is to, to help you guys out, to bring closure. Sounds like, you know, you're incredibly supportive, which is, I mean, how you keep a marriage going, right? We wanted to talk to each of them individually to make sure that we weren't surprising anyone about the information that we were going over. Brian didn't seem to know about a lot of the details between Sarah and John. To be honest, it didn't seem like he wanted to know. But he did want to support his wife, whether John was real or not. We brought them together and it was time to let them know what we had found. We did happen to find the real person in the image. The real man in the image, his name is Anthony Tingle. He's not a celebrity or anybody that you guys would know, but he is somebody that has his image stolen all the time. It turns out that John was lying about who he said he was. These images were stolen from a man by the name of Anthony. This man has nothing to do with the scam. He's a regular guy, and whoever was behind this profile using the alias John stole all of this innocent man's photos off of his social media profile. Unfortunately, John does not exist, and this whole thing was a romance scam. That makes me feel better to know that, that we have, I have a name now, and I know that this person is using his image. So that makes me feel... That makes me feel better. He's a victim too. Yeah, because he's a victim. Yes. yes. What are things looking like for you guys? Like how, how are you guys seeing things moving forward? I know I've learned my lesson um, and I will never be doing anything like this ever again. Um, and um, I can only hope that it'll make us stronger. I just, I just feel stupid. It's just money. It's, I know, but... Is there anything that you want to say to Brian? No, just that I love him and that I am super glad that he's willing to stand by me through um, the worst thing that I've ever done and that I will probably, hopefully, ever do and that he's here to help me through it and that he is... He's been my rock the whole time. I mean... I would not be here if it wasn't for him. Like I said, I'm, I'm here to support you any way I can. I know. And it's just money. I, I don't care if it's $50,000, $100,000, $200,000. I don't care. It's just money. He, he's my soulmate. He's my better half um, and everything. So I can't imagine my life without him. Um, so... That's where I'm at. We took the next steps and looked into all the crypto wallets a few days later. 
so you know now that things have kind of died down and you've got time to think about some of the stuff that we went through where are you at i'm just ready for it to be done i'm ready to um cut off all contact with him now um hopefully we looked into all of sarah's financial information she sent over $250,000 just in Bitcoin to John. So here's how it worked. Sarah first exhausted all of her accounts, savings and 401k, along with her credit cards. She would buy gift cards and send the codes to John on the back of the cards. John would receive the code and sell the gift cards on websites like Paxful. All you need to do is have the code that was on the back of that gift card and the website will buy your gift card for around 80 cents on the dollar. She would then receive money from other people from around the world that John was also scamming. Next, she'd take that money that she received and put it into Cash App. They have a feature in which you can turn your cash into Bitcoin. That's when she would send all of the funds to John's Bitcoin wallet. We were able to put a really nice crypto graph together for you. I will have to admit this is one of the largest reports we have ever created for anyone. Wow. A few of the accounts were actually labeled investment scam. And what that tells me is these accounts have already been flagged. And then we spent some time going through the uh, list of people that you either sent or received money from. We were able to pull all of their Facebooks all of their phone numbers. What we found were a bunch of normal people. So they thought they were just sending it to me, not that I was sending it on to somebody else. Unfortunately, these people are victims just like you. Luckily, it's quite possible for us to be able to trace who is behind these crypto wallets. We have also reached out to all of the other people who sent money to Sarah so we can hopefully get more answers on why they were sending her money. As far as you being online, has this been a lesson for you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, not doing this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, I know you like being on the internet. You like making friends um, for yourself. Just stay safe. Yeah. I learned my lesson. We will not be sending anybody um, money unless it's somebody like physically like i'm delivering it to them and i know who they are and they like they're super close friends with me or they're a, actually a family member of mine and i am hand delivering it to them um i will never do this ever again <laughs> this whole situation where does this leave you and your marriage with your husband um we've talked um obviously about all of this and right now brian is pretty cool about everything he's still in it for the long haul just like i am so i mean to be honest i think you're lucky to have oh, uh, him I, for sure. I know i am i'm not i'm not blinded by that by any means i know i am extremely lucky to have him um and that he's um stood by my side through all of this um i just now need to um work on myself um and um figure out why i did the things that i did um why um i let him manipulate me and everything the way that he did and why i i let myself go like that i have no idea well we all make mistakes um we do want to say that we appreciate you um for opening up about your story and just being so transparent about your life with your husband hopefully someone out there is you know that's going through something similar as you um, is able to watch this video and see your story and they're able to pull themselves out of their situation yeah let's hope let's hope sarah blocked john after this interview she filed a police report the following day and we are submitting a kyc request there's a high chance that we are able to go after the people that scammed her out of money Thank you everyone for tuning in. Remember, all of our new videos go out every Wednesday, so please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, Seekers, we'll see you guys next time.